Hello, we're back again for the second half of chapter one of the case of the Mossy Lake Monster. Click. Actually, it was more like two minutes, six seconds. As soon as Drake and his dad drove up, Nell flew out of her house and into the car, lickety split. She was never one to waste time. She was, after all, the fastest runner in the fifth grade. Not only that, Nell was a no-nonsense woman of science. Her coffee-colored hair was pulled back into a ponytail, and her scientist cap was shoved on her head in a most no-nonsense way. Morning, Drake, said Nell, sliding into the back seat beside him. Morning, Nell, said Drake. Morning, Mr. Doyle, said Nell. Morning, Nell, said Drake's father. Sam Doyle was pretty handy to have around especially if one happened to be a scientist. Besides driving Drake and Nell all over town, Mr. Doyle owned a science equipment and supply company. Whatever Drake needed for his lab, Mr. Doyle could get. Computers, sinks, microscopes, telescopes, beakers, test tubes, even lab coats with their names on them. It was all the same to him. Just clean up your mess and don't blow up the lab, was what he always said. So far, they'd only blown up the lab twice. Drake filled Nell in on the tragic details. It's life or death, he said. Zappy the cat is not eating. Nell nodded. You're absolutely right, Detective Doyle. That's not, there is not a moment to lose. To Caitlin's house and make it snappy, Mr. Doyle. Tires squealed. In three minutes, 17 seconds, they arrived at Caitlin's house. Don't be long, said Mr. Doyle. Check, said Drake. Roger that, said Nell. Drake tripped over the curb as they got out of the car. Tripping came quite naturally to Drake. Nell helped him up and brushed him off. She was a great partner. Together, they hurried to Caitlin's house and rang the doorbell. Caitlin answered immediately. She looked quite sad indeed, with a red, runny nose and watery eyes. Scads of fat cats wound around her legs, meowing, and several dashed outside. Came as fast as we could, Miss Ray, said Drake. Oh, sob, I thought you'd never get here. Caitlin pulled them into the living room and pointed to a corner. Poor Zappy's wrapped in that blanket. Stand back, Miss Ray, said Drake. We'll take it from here. Drake and Nell peeled away the blanket. There lay Zappy the cat. He looked like a little bunch of furry bones. Hmm, murmured Drake. When was the last time he ate? About a week now. I've even tried feeding him his favorite munch a bunch of mice bits but it doesn't seem to matter what I put into his bowl. Nothing works. Why does he lie in the blanket? asked Nell. Comfortable, I guess, replied Caitlin. The blanket arrived last Saturday, a birthday present for my grandma. As soon as I unwrapped it, Zappy snuggled into it and refused to leave. And now that, they're, that he's not eating, oh, sob. I just don't have the heart to take it away. At least he has a comfortable place to sleep, observed Nell. Drake nodded. Comfort was highly important for a starving cat. He rubbed the blanket between his fingers. It's quite soft. Grandma knitted it from Angora rabbit hair. Caitlin sniffed and dabbed her eyes with a tissue. Grandma sends nothing but the best. Where's his food? asked Nell. When Caitlin pointed to an aluminum pie plate, Nell knelt and examined it with her magnifying glass. It was situated on the carpet about six feet from Zappy and was filled with cat food. Certainly plenty of food, remarked Nell, standing up again. No reason for a cat to go hungry, agreed Drake. This case gets more puzzling by the second. Indeed, Detective Doyle, indeed. Just then, Zappy crawled out of his blanket. 
His fur stood on end. Drake and Nell watched as Zappy slowly approached the food dish, ears pressed flat to his head. Closer, closer, two feet, one foot, six inches, one inch. Suddenly, the room exploded with cat fur. Okay, so this is the end of chapter 1B, or the second half of chapter 1. Hope you liked it.